So I'm with the Police and Crime Commissioner for Surrey, uh, David Munro, and we're at his office at Mount Brown, which is the Surrey Police Headquarters. And uh, just wanted really, because we've not spoke to you for a while, David, and we thought we'd just uh, really get an update from you on, on what's going on um, in your life as the Police and Crime Commissioner. Now, you told me earlier that you're just about to publish your revised Police and Crime Plan. Could you tell us what that is, please? Yes, indeed. I'm halfway through my tour, my four-year tour. Yes. So it's time actually to refresh uh, what I said during the campaign. I think we've had some really great successes in the last two years, so it's time to consolidate that and plan for the next two years. And I really want to, I've got two main themes. Uh, one, of course, is continuing to bear down on crime. Nasty spike of burglaries last year, but we've made some really impressive arrests. So I think, I think we're on top of that. Yeah. Uh, and secondly, uh, I want to be looking together with the Chief Constable far into the future, I'm not just thinking having a really good police force in the next couple of years. What are we going to be like in 20 years' time? How are we going to deal with the new crimes? And that's what we're working on at the moment. Wonderful. Now, you mentioned burglary. Now, that is something I see a lot of um, in, in terms of press releases that Surrey Police put out. It's clearly been a problem in Surrey. And I think that perhaps it's such an attractive county that uh, it does attract uh, some of the worst elements of society from outside of Surrey uh, to target, um, you know, some of our, our properties. Um, you know, what are you doing to crack down on Well, that? what you say is very true. Surrey is a wealthy place, lots of money around. Yeah. Burglars know that, especially international criminal gangs. It's not just the local lads. Yeah. Uh, it's people who come to Surrey from overseas specifically to target them. Uh, yes, there was a spike last year and burglary is too high. There's no doubt about it that uh, but with intelligence led policing so we can actually catch the burglars before they start their work and we've made some really really good arrests recently hopefully that will, will uh, result in some very long prison sentences as well but I don't want to sound complacent at all we've got more uh, to go there I think we're doing well um, but we mustn't relax our uh, attentions for a single second and residents can help too of course do report anything suspicious, 999 or the 101 number. And of course, make sure that your CCTV, if you've got it, is switched on. Make sure our burglar arms are in working order. All those common sense precautions. Let's not make it easy for them, eh? Exactly. Right, excellent. Now, in the news, there's a lot of, um, I suppose, publicity around the, the knife crime problem in London. Thankfully, I don't think it is much of a problem in Surrey, but still it is uh, a concern to residents. Is there, is there any work going on around that? Oh, very much so. Again, the it's intelligence-led. Um, Surrey is still a safe county rel relatively to, to other counties and areas, uh, and it's up to the police to ensure that that's so. Knife crime, of course, has to be a worry. Of course it has. I'm pleased to say it hasn't reached anything like the proportions for London, but it's Surrey Police's job to make quite sure we, we keep on top of that. I suppose some of that is around partner working as well, isn't it? About partner agencies, because I think there's a perception among young people that maybe it's cool to carry a knife or, or whatever, especially when they see this kind of a gangster men mentality uh, that's put across on the media fr from London. So uh, is there work going on with the partner agencies? Ab absolutely. Yeah. Uh, lots of other police forces, we work very closely with the Met, naturally uh, but we're also working with charities social right. services yes. uh, prison governors to make sure that if someone does offend we can actually lead them onto a path with a straight a straight and narrow so that they don't re-offend we're there not just to punish people but we're there to help people as well right very good now you've mentioned quite a few times during this interview intelligence-led policing Clearly that is a strategy of uh, Surrey Police. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about that and how, how that actually works. Yeah, well it's common sense really. Uh, the way we um, reduce and prevent crime uh, is to catch the criminal uh, before they've actually started. Uh, we do a lot of reactive stuff. If you ring 999, you'll get a very good response. But we want to be there uh, before 
a burglar hits your home. Uh, and uh, technology is helping us in a, in a big way. I'm not going to go into any details sure. uh, at all, uh, but police uh, forces all over the country, especially in Surrey, are moving away from the reactive as far as they can and be what we call proactive. We're going to be there first. Right, good enough. Now, thanks very much for updating us there, David. I just wanted to take this opportunity to plug your new Facebook page because uh, I suppose you're no different to any other uh, politician and you want to make sure that uh, people know what you're doing on their behalf. Uh, so you've created a Facebook page. I'm going to overlay um, your Facebook address onto this video. But what type of things can people expect to see on your page? Well, forward? they'll find out what I'm doing. Right. Um, my primary job is to hold Surrey Police to account. Yes. And so people will find out exactly how I'm doing that. Yes. I hope to give all the latest news uh, and updates. And so, above all, uh, to put over the fact that people can be reassured uh, that Surrey Police uh, is on their side. Wonderful. David Monroe, thank you very much.